So now let's start coding the formatting. I'll click format and double click bold first. So what we want to do here is to check the bold font and that's gonna be used for a font. But we have to first figure out if the user already clicked it before, meaning if it's already clicked. So basically we will determine whether it's clicked and then toggle the bold font status. So we'll go to our MNO bold format and see if it's checked. And if it is checked, we will uncheck it. Otherwise, we will check it. So it's going to be the opposite. So it's going to be not MNU bold format dot checked. So again, if it's not checked, it's going to be checked and it becomes a new format. And if it was checked, now it's going to be unchecked. And if it's unchecked and nothing else is checked, then our default is going to be used, which is normal font. Because now we are going to call the change font, which is going to perform the change of the font. So it's going to be change font method. And when we go back to it, over here, if we uncheck the bolt, then our regular is going to be used. Or if something else is checked, then that font will be used. So very simple. And we're gonna do the same for the other fonts. Let's go to design, double click italics. I'm gonna copy these two lines because it's gonna be very much the same, except of course we are dealing with MNU italic formatting. So if this one is checked, then we will uncheck it and vice versa. Now let's go to underline. Again, I'm gonna copy these. And we want the MNU underline formatting. And we will revert it whether it's checked or not. Now for the size, we have three options. So instead of having three separate events, we are going to use one event for all three of these. So I'm going to select all three of these, go to properties, events, and I want to click event. So when one of these is clicked, this event is going to be triggered. And I'm just going to call it MNU size format underscore click and press enter. So here we need to first determine which one of those options was clicked. And we did it before with the radio buttons by using the sender object. Because this event is only triggered when one of these three options is clicked, no other element on the form has access to this one. So we know that the sender has to be one of those three options. So we simply need to determine which one it was. So I'm going to create a string, I'll call it size clicked. And we want the click to be captured from toolstrip menu item, because that's what we are capturing here. These are toolstrip menu items and one of them is gonna be clicked. So let's do that. Let's do toolstrip menu item. And that is coming of course from the sender. And what we are capturing is the text. The text property is basically, that's gonna say small, medium or large. When I go to format and size, you can see that these are the options for the text. And somehow this moved, so I'm going to move it up here. Just click and drag. I think when I selected them, the small moved to the middle. But anyway, this is the text property, small, medium and large. So that is the property that we are capturing over here. So next we need to disregard what was already clicked in that submenu. So we'll set all three of these to false because we are now capturing a brand new click. And like I said, it's gonna say small, medium or large. And that's how we determine which one is gonna be checked. But by default, we will uncheck them all first. We'll go to MNU format, small size and set the checked to be false. Then we'll go to MNU format, medium size and uncheck it as well if it was checked. And finally, the large size as well. And now we will check the one item that was actually clicked. So 
that's the one that will have the text that we captured here. Now one thing we have to notice though when I go to the design, it doesn't just say small, it has the S underlined. That is our whole text string that is going to be captured. So it's going to be the end symbol and then small, or it's going to be the end symbol and medium, or end symbol and large. So that is our string size clicked. So we can determine that by having a switch statement. So let's do a switch and we are checking what the size clicked says. And if the case for this says that it's small, so it's going to be the end and small, then we know that the font size selected is a small size. So we can set our font size to be the default, which is 8, because by default we have the small size. And we'll set this item to be checked in our menu. So we'll go to a menu, format small size, checked equals true. And let's break. Then we'll have another case, and this one will say medium, but of course with the end symbol. And I'm gonna copy these three, but I'm gonna modify them. So the medium font size can be 12, and we don't want the small size checked, we want the MNU medium size checked. And finally, we have the large font. So if that's the case, that would say the text to be and large. And I'll copy those three lines again. And the large font can be 18 points. And we are going to have the MNU large formattings checked. And after we know which one was clicked, we can now call the change font, which will set this size, because over here in our method here, we are going to have a new size that is going to be based on what's being clicked from the menu. So next, let's test this.